Okay, this is going to be program number 3A. Uh, so this one here is a little bit different. Here we're actually going to develop a flow chart. Okay, now when we program, we always think of things in terms of a process and how things flow. Now an easy way to represent this is to use a flow chart or to create a flow chart for your program. If you are smart and organized, you will do this for every program you write. Now, in reality, that is not what is going to happen. But if you want to take care of things and if you are doing a larger program where you can't keep it all in your head at one time, this is a very effective method to use and it's something that is essential for you to learn how to do. Uh, it's also essential for you to be able to understand how to read a flowchart and develop a program from that. So it's something that we're going to do in this course. If you are trying to work with other people on a program together, it is something that is essential to be able to do so you can actually express what you're trying to do with your program uh, so that everybody understands what the program is trying to do, especially if you're trying to have one person codes one portion of a program, another person codes another portion. Everybody can visualize what all that code is trying to do together. So let's look at how we need to actually develop a flowchart. So there's a couple symbols we're going to use shown here. Uh, the key ones we're going to use at this stage right now, the flow line, just an arrow, which basically shows the, the process flow in your program, how, uh, how things happen. The big oval there, we're going to have one of those at the beginning where we start, one of them at the end where we stop. So we're definitely going to have a start and a stop point, or start and end. Uh, the rectangle, that is going to be a process. So anything that's done, like if there's a math function in the program or something like that, anything that's executed in the by the code like that, we're going to represent by the rectangle. The diamond is a decision. So if we are doing a, an if-else type statement or doing a, any type of decision like that, we'll represent that by a diamond with different branches. This way is going to be for true, this way for false. Uh, when we get into some more complex programs, we'll start using those. The parallelogram is going to be a data uh, input or output. Uh, function. So whenever we're getting data like our console read line or write line, that would be the, the uh, parallelogram. Uh, we've got an annotation where we can put in comments. We have this one here, predefined process. That would be like an external method or something like that. And then some other ones which we'll get into a bit later as well. But for this part here, Here's what we're going to do. We are going to make a flow chart for this particular program here. We're going to try to make one for a program that is going to take the sides of a rectangle that the user gives you, uh, and you're going to calculate the area of that rectangle. So that is our program we're going to develop. We are going to use a nice little piece of software you can find online. If you go to Draw I.O., you will find this there, and we are going to use that to develop our flow chart. So this flow chart you're going to uh, develop and put this into your Word document. Uh, as long as you put that into your, take a screenshot of it and put that into your Word document, that's going to be part of the assignment for this week. Okay, so let's give this a try. So we are going to go to Draw.io Takes me here. Save diagrams to. I'm just going to say device. Create a new one. I'm going to create a flowchart. Create. This is the example that it gives here. I'm just going to delete all that. Start all over again. So, like we said, we are going to have a couple basic things we are going to use. So, for starters, we're going to have the parallelogram, we're going to use that. We're going to use the arrow. We are going to use the rectangle. We're going to use text. And we are going to 
going to use the oval. In this case, we'll call it the ellipse. All right, so that is our basic stuff. So I'm going to start off here. We know we're going to have a start and an end. So let's do an oval. Take this, change the font. Take this font of 24. Do this in Comic Sans because I like that font. to the front. I clicked up here to bring that to the front. All right, so let's say that's going to be our start point. So let's have a start. Start and end. Now this was for uh, creating, asking for a height and a width, and then calculating area. So if we remember, parallelogram is our user input, user output. So we're going to start with a user input, and we're going to have a user output down further. Copy this. I'm just going to say prompt user for width. Copy that. We'll paste here. Now we can get very detailed or less detailed, depending on how much we want to do here. So we could write a flowchart here that just says get data, do math, output data. And that could be our flow. Now that you got to think how do I translate this into a program? So the more detailed your flowchart is, the less thinking you need to do when you actually go to make your uh, program. So I'm going to make this one very, very detailed. So that when I go to do my program, there's basically this will outline pretty much every line that needs to go into my program. There's really not much thought process that needs to go into the programming side of it. It should just be a matter of translating flowchart into program. So I'm going to prompt user for width. then I know that I'm going to have to take that width and convert it to a, uh, a number.
I'm going to say convert to a double. User for height. Copy. Paste here. Convert that to a double. I'm going to move everything over here. Next thing I'm going to have to do now that I have those things is I'm going to have another internal process, which is going to be I'm going to call this. Math for area. And then display area on console. So those are basically my steps. I'm going to arrange this a bit better here. Let's do this. Now we're going to take this arrow, swing this around. I'll tell you if everything's all lined up here. Got arrow. Not sure how to do this one. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so we can do this. Arrow, break that here. Right here. Right here. close. So this is basically all of the steps you should need to follow to create a flowchart for your process. In the end I've got that, so 
my program starts, I prompt the operator for a width. I convert that, what they give me, into a double. I prompt them for the height. I convert that into a double. I do math for the area. I display the area back to the console as the end of my program. All right, so that should be the flow chart. This is what I'd be looking for, a flow chart that describes that process. Okay, so in the end, you can, let's see, export as a picture. If you like, you can do that. You can store it somehow. Or if you want to just take the really easy way, you can always just take the screenshot like we've been doing with everything else. Take a screenshot and insert that directly into your document as well. Okay, so that is how we create a flowchart for a program. All right, that is it for program three, part one. Part two, we are going to actually create the program for this flowchart.